Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback. Now, Tony Cruz over at our web store in Canada has sent me a little package with some really good goodies in it. So I'm going to uh, work my way through them over a few videos. But uh, the first one that jumped out to me when I looked through is this. Very old BASF and this is the LH and this is from the 1971 to 1973 range. However, as you can see, this is in a strange little box. Doesn't say a lot apart from, you know, it's 60 minutes, it's an LH and it's unrecorded, but yeah, let's have a look. Ah. Where's your solder fabric? That that solder it makes uh, reminds me. What was it? Soldenica. They were a cassette maker, weren't they? I think, uh, or at least they made stuff for cassettes. But yeah, other than that, there's not a lot to look at on the outside. But it is a unique sort of case. It's a library case. So let's slip this off, and there we have it. It's uh, quite quite sturdy and then what you do is you pop it open at the top there and out comes the cassette Ooh, and there's literature in it so let's have a look at the literature let's have a look here so oh 1969 it says there I, I haven't got the direct camera translator unfortunately on on this camera if I was filming this on on a webcam uh, or my camera phone, maybe we could see it. Actually, there's an idea. Give me a second, let's see if I can rig this up. Okay, so I'm going to pop up the translation I got on the screen. Here we go. So, status first of verse 69. As a consignment of goods, this designation is a clear distance above the arrival to enter in the writing field. Postage is 0 0.30 Deutschmarks or 30 Phoenix. As funnel posts were approved, the postage is 60. Okay. Right, okay, so, hmm, in all the countries, shipments would be made as a letter, a good tip for the perfect delivery of compact cassettes, lock up the tape during transport, or in either the archive, the supplied one, use red core mount or strip, cut one times ten centimetres about the size of a postcard, and insert into the core opening. Okay, so, yeah. Ah, of course. No, it's not good to sew, it could be ASF. Badisha, Anilin and Soda Fabric. That's what BASF stands for. Right, got it. Okay, so what this seems to be is that this isn't really designed as a library case. It's more designed as to be, you know, one of them letter cassettes. So you send, you know, the cassettes to each other, you know, as letters and, you know, it's telling you. Okay, so let's have a look further explore. So that's the archive card. And right, I don't want to damage this if I can really help it because it's okay. So what have we got? Right, okay. So this looks like it could be an address label that you stick on the front of the cassette, and yeah, the, if you want to mail it to somebody, let's have a look. Uh, that's just backing paper. I mean, obviously, the adhesiveness has gone over this in the past 50 odd years uh index card so you can say what's actually in there another one okay all uh, right yes here we go it says here when sending this tape abroad inquire with the local post office for correct postage and any special conditions so you see okay uh yeah so basically that's that's basically a translation of this but this is just in german because it's talking about the the german phonopost service so yeah so this was a cassette for for sending audio letters to each other i mean it has got whoops it's got the uh, clips in there to yeah it's got the clips in there to secure it while it's there um mm, yeah very so it's it's basically an lh cassette but the ones around this time have like the, you know, if you look at this one here, which is the non postal version, it's got the SM on it. Has it got, has this cassette got the SM mechanism in it? Uh, not entirely sure, but tell you what, let's wind the tape on a bit and let's see if, if it's loose, if it's stuck. Oh no, that's, that's freely moving. 
okay so yeah we've got an early 70s cassette here the the tape isn't very shiny at all I mean if you've got to think this is probably mostly used for voice recordings than anything else it wasn't really designed to uh, to put a lot of music on it it looks very thick tape for a 60 that very thick tape uh, and like I say it's not shiny at all it looks a bit type zero-ish but it's BASF so it ain't gonna be type zero so I'm curious to see if this has got the SM mechanism in it actually so uh, just give me a second and I'm going to uh, open the tape up and let's have a look inside of it shall we give me a second no nope, no security mechanism in here just plain hubs a very uh, sort of like I don't know it's almost almost like a metallic -y sort of paper for the uh, slip sheet but other than that yeah pretty unspectacular in size but what do you want it's a it's an early 70s cassette let's put it back together again so there we go the BASF letter tape from the late 60s early 70s so well, yeah a lot of companies just give like in, in cardboard mailers thinking of the environment already by using petroleum based plastic but you know this could be used more than once you you record your letter and you put in your little clip to hold it in place whack it inside very nicely sculpted so that it holds it very securely close it up bit of sellotape put your label on and mail it to where it wants to go and it's pretty secure now I'm not going to put this through the old uh, music test by recording any music on it because I've, I've had a look at the tape and then I've done some initial trials with it and yeah the it, it's you can't calibrate this tape it, it's not usable I'm not knocking BASF I mean you know this will have been a, a tape for voice level recording That's, come on it's 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 50 years old at least so you know the the fact that it's not rotted away in 50 years says something so i'm not going to subject it to a music test because it wouldn't be fair on it and the thing i love most about this is is, is how unique it is it's a unique cassette you know the the one that that is worth collecting you know i'm i'm going to happily put this in my collection yeah i can't record anything on it but who cares it's a collector's piece just put all the memorabilia back together put it inside the case close it up slip it back in the shell and uh, in fact you can put the little slip sheet back on it let's see if I can put the slip sheet on without destroying it probably not because it's already splitting pretty bad but there we go anyway so yeah it's a really nice little bit of memorabilia that and i wanted to show you that anyhow because it, it's a lovely little thing and if you want one tony has got these in stock in the cassette comeback store www.cassettecomeback.com a really nice little thing so you know to make up whoops for not being able to listen to some music on this let's go to the polar opposite let's go to a cassette that will no doubt be allowed to record some music and he'll do a brilliant job of it well it's one of my favorite makes and I know it's one of yours Denon now this is a Denon S-Port mm, not, not a Sport an S-Port because let's be honest who needs a Sport cassette what the hell's that all about a Sport cassette oh yeah it's what I listen to while jogging maybe actually maybe it's designed for, for jogging but it's a high precision tape so my first initial thoughts are on this is okay so what formulation is this is it the HD6 which is the single coat ferrocobalt the HD7 the double coat ferrocobalt or the HD8 which is a metal particle type 2 um, I'm thinking it's not going to be HD8 in this because these were sold as you know towards the end of the time that Denon was selling tapes these will have been sold as like you know the cheap one the sport you know very 90s packaging love it uh let's have a look what else high position type 2 let's see what it says on the back it's great for cd recording and ideal for high quality card decks and portables slim curved case won't tear at your pockets purse or bag 
it's a smooth shape it's comfortable to hold too okay so it's cobalt oak gamma ferric oxide for high output low noise wide frequent response great report okay high highs value means you get great denon tape for your money so this is like i say one of the cheaper ones so the fact that it's saying the uh, cobalt oak gamma ferric oxide and it's not saying double cobalt dope or double layer so i'm going to think this is going to be hd6 tape inside this but it's a denon and hd6 is great so let's have a look see at this it's bad let's see how we can open this properly i always get this wrong but i, I still do it this way anyway one day i will learn there we go down the edge down the edge without slicing your hands off mm -hmm. let's have it here we go nearly there that'll do right that'll do right so and all this thing it's basically a slim case which is cheaper so there we go that's an attractive looking cassette now this looks like the same shell uh, some later Denons that I've got again Denon shells really lovely Denons are all lovely cassettes I mean that that's distinctive that's nice so you're gonna have the yeah the little tiny stickers there because they stick in this bit here so let's see what else let's have a look at the J card Ooh, the cheapo J card right so it's got a it's got a fold there for some reason in the middle, I don't know if you can see that, it's, it's got a fold along there for some reason, but very minimalist J card, full lifetime warranty, yeah, Nippon Columbia Limited, but uh, yeah, when, when did we ever meet a Denon we didn't like? So uh, let's fire up the deck, and let's have a listen to how this performs with some music. Right, let's use the ZX9 for this one because I haven't used this one for a while. So let's uh, pop the old Denon in. Let's get it calibrated. Okay. Okay, the azimuth is pretty good. Okay, that's spot on. Bias, need to do a little bit of tweaking with the bias. Okay, goody gumdrops. That's all calibrated up. So I'm going to use another track from Gunnar Olsen. This one's called Circular. And incidentally, I need to say this about the tracks. You know, the tracks I am limited to what I can use because of royalty free purposes. I use something which um, will get a copyright hit, and it's simple. These, you know, these videos don't generate any money for me, and they don't generate a lot anyway, but some would be nice. So, not all of the tracks that I use, I use because I think they're amazing music that I want to spread. It's just. You're supposed to listen to them whether you like the style of music or not to gauge how close the cassette can be to the source. So I usually try and pick tracks which have maybe pronounced treble, pronounced bass, so you can hear the differences if there's any roll off, etc., or distortion. Not that I want you to love this artist or that I'm promoting them because I'm not. So if it's not to your taste, it really doesn't matter. It's all about trying to see how the tape can compare to the source simple as so here we go with circular
Oof, that wasn't a very good Denon tape, was it? <laughs> of course I'm joking. It's like every Denon tape that I've ever used. Fantastic. In fact, Denon in a ZX9, yeah, low-end cassette, uh, cassette loving there, you know, that's bargain basement stuff. It gets a lot better. It really doesn't. Um, yeah, every time I use a Denon cassette, I think, yeah, it's hard to say it, but... They're just consistently brilliant, aren't they? The truth. So I hope you enjoyed that again. Denon using the, the European shell from 1990, but this was an American market cassette in the 92 range from what I've been looking at on the internet, but great shell before they over, sort of went over to the general magnetic shells of the last ones they did but yeah they did this in a metal version as well but superb cassette all bold denons are they always have been uh, yeah they're the, one of the most consistently expensive brands out there but for good reason and like i said that's 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 a 20 dollar cassette really but uh yeah fantastic and like i say it's nice to look at a a bit of heritage it might not be usable but it's a lovely thing to have that it's the basf mailer tape from the early 70s late 60s and yeah I'd, i just want to say thanks to tony cruz for sending them over to me to have a look at and if you wish to purchase any of these he's got them for sale at www.cassettecomeback.com so thanks for watching please i'm going to keep barking at this because i've got 20,000 subscribers and you guys aren't, aren't doing this little favor for me i want you to go over to my other youtube channel tony's toy chest just click the subscribe button for me please i'm doing plenty of videos for you so give me a bit of love back if you can so that's it for this video but i have some more plans so uh until then happy taping and take care bye bye